claims towards sudden changes. You will see changes today. What is prophetic? Prophetic means divinity. What is glimpse? Glimpse means assured direction. What is sudden? Sudden means quick. What is change? Change means turn around. What is prophetic glimpse? towards sudden change it means resting on the assured side with a great turning in in view you are resting on the side of heaven with a great turning in view so my expectation is simple i know that today my story will change say amen to that The difference in your life can only be achieved when you give your time to God. And that is why you don't stop knowing God. You can stop knowing men, but don't stop knowing God. Because what is commanded is more futuristic than what is promised. Take note of that. What God commanded is more futuristic than the promises of men. What God said in the word is more better than what a man promised you. If you do what is required, you will not stay too long expecting changes. If you do what is required, you will not be staying too long waiting for things to work. One plus one is what? One plus one is what, church? Do you need to say it's four? No. You do your part, the calculation will do its part. When you do what is required, you will not wait too long for things to change. Your victory is in the hands of your responsibility. Write that down. Your victory in life is in the hands of your responsibilities. The things you do with your life is what alters the victories of your life. The why questions are for the ignorant. Why now? Why did it happen? That was for foolish people. Amen? That's not what you should be asking. You should be asking, what next should I do? Please write what I'm saying. Stop asking why. Be asking, what next should I do? Now that this thing has happened, what next will I do to stop it? Because the why question is an ignorant question to ask. It don't happen. Has it not happened? What you should be asking is, it will never happen again. So we spend too long with the why questions. Why? why for the wise we don't ask why for the wise we ask what next not why i don't go backwards i go forward what i can't change i ignore are you following me staying too long in a thing that will not change you it's the sign that you're a stupid person lift the two hands up i pray for you today Receive the wisdom to ask the next question. Yeah. Are you hearing me, all of you? The wisdom, not why. But what next should I do? So you can obtain sudden changes in life. So I'm going to give you six things to do. Quickly. So you can obtain sudden, pay attention to me. As I'm teaching you, I'm prophesying to your life. Number one, if you want changes in life, you must hear the voice of God. Nobody changes suddenly without the voice of God. 
So what is the voice of God? It is the sound of God. It is the direction of God. It is the will of God. And it is the way of God. The voice of God is the way of God. Genesis 12 from verse 1 to 4. And he said to Abraham, leave thy kindred. By Genesis 22 from verse 1 to 4, he told him, take thy only son, Isaac. And he said, okay, God. And he obeyed him. By verse 10 to 13, God had sworn in his life to bless him. Because he was a man who obeyed the voice of God. It shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. He said, then will I set thee on high, above all nations. So the voice of God is the beginning factor for sudden changes in life. Abraham wouldn't have changed without the voice of God. Amen. His change began by honoring the voice of God. So when you neglect God's voice, you want to remain where you are. His changes began when you honored the voice of God. Look at Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 32. From verse 10 to 12. The voice of God. The voice of God. The voice of God. The voice of God. He found him in a desert land. And in the waste hallowing wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. 11. Let's do 11 together. Everybody go. Flutter it over her young. Spread it abroad her wings. Take it them, bear it them on her wings. Go verse 12 together. 12 together, read. So the Lord alone did lead him. And there was no strange God. Who led him? A Gwashuku God. A Ibuza God. Ikwetu Yoku God. Who led him? Who led him? God led him. Not the opinions of men. No. Not the decisions of people. No. God alone led him. So if you want sudden change in your life, God must lead you. You must recognize the voice of God. No matter how painful it, it seems to you, you must wait for that voice. Wait for it. Wait for that voice. Wait until he speaks to your life. Don't be getting ahead of yourself all the time. Running up and down and trying to, to, to meet up with people. No. No matter how people abuse you. No matter how things are bad. Wait for that voice. Because when it comes on you. You will be quicker and faster than ever. Abraham was useless when he came. He took him as fast as he could. And make him the best man that ever lived. Lift your hands up. May you hear his voice today. Amen. Lift your two hands and claim it. Look at me. Be, be sensitive here. May you hear the voice of God. Amen. I don't care what, what men have said about you. May you hear the voice of God. Amen. That is where your sudden change starts from. That is how Abraham changed. And nobody, barring no result, became the best man ever lived. So let me give you some videos on how to hear the voice of God. You can hear him through the Holy Spirit. John 16, 13, through the Holy Ghost, God can speak to you through the Holy Spirit. You can have an inner impression through the Holy Ghost. Look at that. The Spirit of the Lord of you shall come. He will guide you. You start getting an inner impression inside of you. So you align yourself to that voice. Number two, the word of God. As you read the Bible, you can be hearing directions from scriptures. That's why you must get up every morning and take a, the scripture and read it. Don't get up without reading the Bible. It is risky. Every day there must be a word from God over your life. Not your phone, amen? Amen. Not Facebook, amen? Are you hearing me? Not Facebook, not Instagram. Your Bible, you have a direction from scriptures. Take down 
Hebrews 4 from verse 12. For the word of God is quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. What does it do? What does it do? Even to the dividing asunder of what? And what? And what? And what? And what? Of what? Of the thoughts of men and the intents of that's why you must read your Bible every day. Every day, read a scripture that hits your spirit. Don't say, I, I read it today. No, no. You can read one chapter for one week, no problem. Different, different instructions can be given to you. But read your Bible daily for daily voicing of the heavens about your life. And number three, your prophet. Some of the calamity people have faced in the future. They disobeyed some, some, some instructions three years ago. Are you following me? Yes. I've always said it. You did that thing three years ago. Full two years ago, one year ago. And don't tell me why, why. I'll tell you, come on, shut up. Don't ask me why. Check yourself. Check yourself. You obey the voice of your prophet. Because that is the voice of God. Over what? Your life. 2 Chronicles 20 from 20. Over your life and family. These are mediums. Look at that. Obey God shall be established. Believe his prophets. So shall you what? Simple. Check believers in church who are not doing well in church. And those who disobey their pastors. Very simple. So the voice of God promotes. The voice of God preserves. The voice of God protects. The voice of God redeems. And the voice of God rescues. When you hear that voice, it promotes you. When you hear that voice, it preserves you. When you hear that voice, it protects you. When you hear that voice, it redeems you. When you hear the voice of God, it rescues your life. Number two thing you must do to have, thank you Jesus, lift your two hands up. My prayer for you today, that you will hear every spiritual deafness. I curse in the name of Jesus Christ. You will hear the voice of God. No matter the crisis, you will hear the voice of God. You will hear the voice of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, serving God. Serving God through soul winning is one medium that will also give you sudden changes in life. Genesis 14 from verse 14. You know, this is so important. All of you read the scripture. Read loud. And when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants, born in his own house. How many were they? 318 pursued them to die. Now, now, so that means if Abraham comes to church every Sunday, how many persons come with him to church? Answer. Answer now. Go ahead. Don't be afraid. Answer. How many people come to church with Abraham? How would Abraham be before his pastor? Just imagine how the pastor would take Abraham. That anytime Abraham enters church and sits down, 318 people enter with him. That's the whole church. You, you are in church, but one leg is inside, one leg is outside. What are you doing? One man enters church, he has 300 plus entering church with him. Every service day when he goes to church. So what is soul winning? It is doing the master's end time mandate. Anyone who wins a soul is obeying God very dearly. Anytime you win one soul, God is excited in heaven. Soul winning excites God more than miracles. Soul winning excites God more than childbearing, more than building a house, more than tumor disappearing. 
more than the dead being raised from the dead. Soul winning excites God more than raising the dead from the dead. Psalm 35 from verse 27. Uh, lift your hands up, please. Lift your two hands up. I decree over your life, you will excite God with your attitude. <laughs> you will bring souls to church and make God be in love with you. Please, if 2,000 dogs protect you and one lion comes to protect you, which one is better? You have 2,000 dogs. Do you, Anytime they see people around me. I have three in this compound. The other day I was coming out, they started backing. I said, you are backing to me. Me, your owner. <laughs> I said, come, 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 get out of this place. He ran and entered the wings of real boat. They now cornered and came this corner. They saw me again. They, I said, take your move. You go and back for things that you need to back for. It's me you're backing at. And when you back, you carry something to run. Is that dog? They won't back and stand and even know who is coming. They are back in there. Two thousand dogs protecting one man. Then a lion now choose to protect you. Which one do you prefer? The lion, the lion does not. He just comes and stands close to you like this. He's not talking. He just stands like this, and you are standing here. People are seeing you stand. This is like this is you. Who will come close to you? Eh? Answer me now. You have two thousand dogs protecting somebody. Then the a lion just came out from the from the desert and walked towards you. Did not kill you, and just say, "My friend, how are you?" <laughs> First, everybody will bow before you. When you finish with that lion, they will be your friend. They will find out if you are alive first. If you are alive, then they will come close to you. So why do you choose people than God? God is saying to you here, if you win one soul, I will rejoice with you. And I will stay with you. So you see, what excites God is not your testimonies. Is the testimony of people giving their life to Christ and being established in the church. Psalm 35, verse 27. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor may that favor what? Uh, answer that favor what? That are doing the things that pleases me. Am I correct? Keep reading. Let them say continually. Let the Lord be magnified. Which has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Those who are doing the things I ask them to do. Not what they want to do. What they like to do. No. Win a soul, win a soul. Go fight, go for outreach. Write it down. Seeking God first is the only way out in this wicked world. Matthew 6, 33. Seek it for the kingdom of God and every other thing shall be world added unto you. Seeking God first. Winning souls to Christ. Is all you need. So what is soul winning? It is reaching out to the world with Jesus Christ. And establishing them in the church. Reach out to people. And make sure they are established in the church. Acts chapter 2, 40, 46. The disciples came out and reached out to the world. And 3,000 at the first gospel they preached. Gave their lives to Christ. Please take note number one. Soul winning attracts you to God. Write that down quickly. Soul winning attracts you to God. When you win souls, you are attracting God to your life. Please 
I've always said to people, don't beg people, please them, and they will give you. All these things I see people begging people, it's because you're not pleasing anybody, amen? If you please a man, he will give to you. No matter how ugly you look. Please people and they will give you. Stop begging people. Though. Lift your two hands up. May God be happy with you. Yeah. Lift your two hands up. May you do the things that will please your father in heaven. Yeah. So winning, I trust God. When I say that prayer, I'm praying for you. Lift your two hands up and say, see, if you don't say amen, that means you, 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 you're not doing what God asked you to do. How many souls are here that belongs to you? He's watching you. He wants to bless you, but you're not giving him room to bless you. Lift your hands up. May you make God remember you. Yeah. May he just look at you and see reasons to bless you. Yeah. Let him just remember you. So A, so B, so C came because of you. So number two, soul winning commands God's attention to your life. When you win souls, you command the attention of God. You are commanding God's attention when you win souls for God. Very important. You can't be seeing people around you, they are not safe. And, and, you, and you know them. How can somebody be, 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 be so satisfied doing nonsense around you? Number three. Soul winning opens you for answers. John 15, 3 to 7. If you want to really see prayers answered, win souls for Jesus. And then you won't struggle to pray. As you say, in the name of Jesus Christ, your results are there. Amen? Very, there are things I don't pray for anymore. I just say, I just, as I think about it, they just happen. Because you are a soul winner. People's interests are your interests. Amen? I said amen? Yeah. Let me give a, a, an illustration. Somebody was carrying breakable, breakable place in his hands. And the plate fell down. He started shouting. You didn't ask the person, are you injured? Your concern is the nonsense plate that got broken. What about the person that carried the plate that's a human being? That has blood. So your first question is, are you hot? Not, is the plate broken? The plate has no life. The man that has life should be considered. Are you following me now? But you, majority of us will ask for the plate first am i correct it's wrong it's very wrong why are you asking for a plate that has no life and god is saying that the most important value that i have is people not property say talk to somebody say it's people not property is people getting saved and serving his name number six soul winning beautifies your labor when you win souls your labor you touch you do small thing you prosper say amen to that you touch something it grows because you're winning souls some of the hardship you're having in life is not the devil say the somebody asks because nobody cost you you are not doing what god wants you to do so you can prosper just start winning souls and check your business. It beautifies your business. Just put God to test. Start winning souls and check your business. You will see sudden changes in your lives. That amen is not good enough for Jesus. Number five, soul winning makes kingdom stars. Daniel 12 from verse 3. When you win souls, you become a star. Stars in the kingdom. You become an industrial star. Academic star. All the stars in this life. Look at the Bible. It's all in the scriptures. You see, they shall turn righteousness as the stars forever. They become life stars on the earth. In your own level of business, you are the best. Say amen to that. Amen. That's what he's talking about. Because you are a soul winner. Number six. So when it makes you wise, Proverbs 11 verse 30. When you're a soul winner, you're a wise person. You become wise. You don't do foolish things. You don't, you don't do a behave anyhow. Look at that. Look at what the Bible said. It says, he that winneth souls is wise. So when it makes you wise. You do wise things. You talk wisely. You do things wisely. 
wise wisdom in marriage, wisdom in business, wisdom in everything. It makes you wise. Number seven, soul winning makes one a miracle worker. When you win souls, you see miracles cheaply in your life. Acts 3 from verse 1 to 5. The disciples started performing miracles after soul winning. By Acts chapter 2, they won souls. By Acts chapter 3, they started, they started performing miracles. They didn't pray for it. They won souls in Acts 2. They performed miracles in Acts 3. Did they pray for it? No. Acts 2, they won souls. Acts 3, miracles everywhere. Lift your hands up. The things you are praying for, you will see the answers this week. Your amen, if you, if you shout better, it will happen to you faster. You don't need to pray for it. Go and win souls. There won souls in Acts 2. By Acts 3, there were miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. You will not miss it. Yeah. Lift your hands again. Lift your hands again. That, this image is not get you to heaven. It's hanging in the sky. I said you will not miss it. Yeah. You will not miss it. You will not miss it. Be beggar, be beggar, be beggar. You will not miss it. Any miracle you desire, you will touch it this year. You will touch it in the name of Jesus. Lift your hands and shout, Amen. Lift your hands and shout, Amen. Lift your hands and shout, Amen. That miracle you have been looking for, it will come this week for you. It will come this week for you. Believe God, it will come for you. Lift your hand and shout, Amen. All you need is to get somebody saved and establish the person in church. The next one, so winning makes you a conqueror. Evil does not overcome you. Acts 4, 27 to 33. You become a conqueror. When you win souls, you are establishing multitudes in the church. Acts 2, 46. Acts 5, 14. You will make many get established in the church. When you win souls for God, many will get born again and love the church and stay in the church. You have multitudes gather because of you. Abraham had 300 plus coming to church because of him. Look at that. Multitudes, both men and women, because of soul winning. Number three thing that will give you sudden change is specialized seed sacrifices. When you develop a habit of sowing special seeds through your life and through the church. Specialized seeds are seeds that must come demanded or commanded by God. Genesis 22 from verse 1 to 4. God demanded for Isaac. It was not Abraham that, that demanded it. God said to Abraham, give me Isaac. Sometimes that's how it comes to you. God is demanding a certain thing from your life because he wants to change you. But you are giving too many excuses. Excuse one, I don't have. Excuse two, I've budgeted. Excuse three, all kinds of excuses. If Abraham has refused to give Isaac, he would have lost his prophecy. Look at verse 12 and verse 16. If he has refused to give Isaac, please pay attention to how changes occur in people's life. There is no magic in the church. And that's why I hate Ozubo Ozubo inside church. Amen. There are parts you must play for God to walk with you. And he said, by myself I have sworn, if God won't have sworn by himself, if Abraham has refused this instruction, he would have said, my only son, my only son, my only son, and God said, bye-bye, I've, I've gone. Stay there with your, with your low-mindedness. And then the upgrade of the prophecy that came in Abraham's life came after he has given that sacrifice. How to sow sacrificial seeds? Number one, sow them promptly. 
Abraham did not waste time. As he heard from God, he acted. Genesis chapter 22 from verse 3 to 4. He obeyed God without discussing with his wife. My husband say, my wife say, there's nothing bad in that. But sometimes those things are signs that you don't believe in God. Are you following me? They are signs that you are disrespecting God who gave you that man and that woman. My husband, my wife, my husband, my wife all the time. They are signs that you are disregarding the author of your life who owns your business, who owns your future. Abraham promptly obeyed God without consulting his wife. Because he knew if he had spoken to his wife, that's the end of that prophecy. I've always said there are people who will kill the prophecy. They are not your enemies. They are people very close to your life. Are you following what I'm saying? They will kill it. Because of self-interest. Number two. You must see where the seed is going. You must know where the seed was asked to go. Genesis 22 verse 4 to 9. Abraham saw where God asked him to sow the seed. Look at it. He saw the place afar off. So he knew where he was asked to sow the seed. You must know where God asks you to sow that seed. And quickly go and sow it. He may be telling you, pay boss for two months. He may be telling you, buy 10 bags of cement. He may be telling you, do a tip of sand. He may be telling you, raise a child in, in church. And you are busy there struggling with all the guides he's given you. So the next harvest will come to your life. So the next breakthrough will come. Now, look at me, all of you. The best time to give is now. I hope you know that. Just excuse your give. It doesn't make sense to me. The best time to sow your seed is now. Now that everything is going up. Now that you cannot, can't even buy water. This is the best time to sow. Lift your hands up. Lift your two hands up. May you be wise this season. When they are saying there's a casting down. May you be saying there's a lifting up. May you enjoy favor this season. Amen. May I hear that they bless you with 10 million. Amen. Lift your hand and say amen to that now. Amen. 20 million. Amen. 50 million. Amen. 100 million. Amen. May you receive those kind of favors in your life. Amen. Simple. Obey God by giving sacrificially. Number three. Deal with distractions while you want to give to God. Genesis 22 from verse 5. Consciously deal with distractions when you are giving to God. Abraham said unto the young man, look at them, look at the scripture. He first dealt with his wife. Now these are the young men he needs to deal with now. He said, wait, wait here, all of you wait here. But he knew if he has taken those men to that site, they will stop him. So he told them, abide here with the axe i and my sacrifice will go up to worship deal with the distractions that tell you don't sow seeds some people sit in church and are telling people don't sow seeds don't sow seeds those are distractions deal with people like that in your life no money is enough is money enough no so invest where you can reap me and they give, no give. Nobody is forcing you to give. But avoid distractions. You are giving your husband is frowning. What, 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 what is he frowning for? Your wife is frowning. Why are you frowning? Somebody tells that you don't give, don't give, and you're accepting the discussion. Those are distractions that will end you in poverty. Avoid distractions. And number four, any giving that was commanded is like we are building now. Go and give. Genesis 22, 6 to 7. There is a command now that we are building. Go and sow your own seed. The little you have is enough. Amen. Don't say I don't have. Do your own part. Build your own block in the site. He took wood. He carried his seed. 
to go and present it to God. This is how to command sudden changes in life. Now look at me. Any father who comes back home every day and eats food and finishes it is a bad father. Are you following me? Your true answer, and I don't look at me like that. Are you following me? If you're a father, you're a father. You come back from work. Your family is sitting close to you. You are eating alone. And then you finish the food. You're a wicked man. You don't do that. Are you following me? You don't do that. Whether you, you are hungry the whole day, you don't do that. You eat and remain that food. Remain that food. I don't finish food though. No matter who serves me, the food must remain. Whether, it, whether the, the bowl of ever you gave me is like this, it must remain. It must remain. Whether it is a piece of chicken, it must remain. Be a man who understands how things are done. They serve you six meat, you finish the six meat. <laughs> Then you not get up and do <laughs> blow breeze. <laughs> you <hope> you <sighs> now lose trousers, lose belt. If you serve me food, you will love to serve me food. Are you following me? You will, be as, you will love to serve me food. You, you will enjoy it. Your child serves you for your wife. Come back. The, you, you have scraped the plate. The plate is as clean as if they washed it. Amen. Father. Oh, who are you? Father. Papa. May you not have the, the kind of child that I have. He will stand there and bring his own plate. Daddy, please put my own, put my own, put my own. Yeah, very fast. Because he does not trust you. He is not sure if you remain for him. He takes his own face. You, as they just have the food, he just takes his own plate. Daddy, please put my own, put my own first, put my own first, put my own. Straight. In case he does not trust you, that you bring the food. And then I'll put his own. And he just ate five minutes ago. He just ate five minutes ago. And I saw him eating. I even gave him the food to eat. He just said, Daddy, I'm very hungry. And me, I've not eaten this morning. That's my first food. That one you're doing is your first food. That's your problem. You know, concern your family. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please be careful. When you are commanded to do something, do it. You know, when I was about to get married, there was no monies for my wedding. No monies. I was in Lagos. And the pastor was preaching on worship. He preached, preached, preached and said, give everything. I looked at myself. What do I have? I had a wristwatch. I had my shoe. I took it and went and dropped on the altar. I have nothing. No money. My wedding, no money for anything. As I landed back in the city where I was pastoring, somebody took the entire marriage, traditional marriage, and paid for it. It was that sacrifice that opened that door. Do something with your giving life. Do something. The next one, you must believe in the provisions of your sacrificial seeds. When you sow seed, believe that it, it will work for you. Genesis 22, verse 8 to 13. Believe that when you sow seed, that there will be provisions when you sow seeds. There was a provision. Abraham said, my son, go to provide. Look at God to provide. Go to verse 9. Read verse 9 together, everybody. Read. And he laid the wood in order and did what? And kept the son on the altar. Go to verse 10. Read. Took the knife to slay his son. 11. Abraham, 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 Abraham. 12. Read on. Now I know you do what? You fear the Lord. Seeing that thou has not withhold thy only. The thing you are withholding can be 1,000 naira. You were asked to give. Can be a shirt. 
can be a little seed you are asked to sow. Some of you can be a very big seed. You go to the next verse. You are struggling with that sacrifice. Seriously. I read this one. Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and behold, what did he see? So between the time he was trying to kill Isaac, this is Isaac. He didn't know that behind him was a ram. That is how giving works for you. If you don't release what God asks you to give, you will never see the next thing. And that's why some people are poor. You are expecting changes to happen, but you were asked to give out something. You are doing nothing about that one. So you see, you will never see the next thing you are asking. Be sensitive to hear the voice of God in case he changes his mind when you are giving to him. Genesis 22, from 11 to 12. Abraham heard God again to stop to kill his child. God can tell you, increase the giving, reduce the giving. You must be sensitive to know what God is asking you to do. Number, number four, your mind. If you want sudden changes, you have to walk on your mind. The mind is the dwelling place of life production. You must take your time to watch what you think about yourself. If you want to see things work for you. If you want to see changes in your life. Please walk on how you think. Philemon 1.14 Proverbs 23.7 Romans 12.2 And Genesis 11 from verse 6 If you want to see changes in life Walk on your mind. He said, be not conformed to this world. He said, be thou renewed by the renewing of your mind. He said, as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. He said, what they imagine to do. So if your mind is not right, your life will not change. Write that down. If your mind is not right, your life will not change. No matter how smart you look, if you're always thinking negative, 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 your life will not get better. Look at Philemon 1 from verse 14. But without the mind, you will do what? Nothing. Be conscious of what you think about. Your mind is your life. Your mind is your life. So quickly, how to use the mind? Number one, renew your mind. Salvation has given you access that your mind is, am I blessing somebody today? I've been blessing you today. That your mind is what? Renewed. So renew your mind by the gospel. Number two, I'm showing you how the mind will be used. Number two, the mind must be led by the Holy Spirit. John 16, 13. You must allow the Holy Ghost to lead your mind. Don't allow movies and people to lead your mind. Amen? Allow the Holy Spirit to lead your mind. Number three, the mind must be creative. You must make your mind creative. Genesis 41, 38, 39. Your mind must be creative. Try to be productive with your mind. Don't be redundant with your mind. Think differently. Think creatively. Look, your, make your mind productive. How best can I do this thing? How best can I do this thing? How best can I say this thing? You make good use of the space of the mind. The mind must be robust and positive to succeed in life. Use your mind effectively. Use your mind effectively. Produce with your mind. At your, in with your life, at work, at home. Even in the church. Use your mind effectively. Don't keep the mind dormant.
is the mind that rules the world. Those who are using their minds are ruling the world. Those who don't use their mind, they are slaves. Are you following me now? Are you following me? Yeah. If you don't use your mind, you will serve others. You may not like it, but that's the truth. Those who use their mind as leading others. Do you know why I always be what I am? My mind is a machinery. It works 24-7. Lift your hands up. You will not be a slave in your own country. Yeah. Lift your two hands up. You will not be a slave in your own father's house. Yeah. You won't be a slave. You are begging for love in your, in, your, in your marriage. You are begging for your father to respect you. Your husband is seeking for respect in his house. A child is seeking for love in his father's house. You're, you're seeking for respect in your office. Use your mind. You don't need all of that. Know what to do and what not to do. And then you're out. Don't be making all kinds of mistakes and you expect respect. You will lose it. So keep making all the mistakes in this life. They tell you stop something, you'll be repeating it. Don't do it, you will do it. That's why you are always where you are. It's, it's as if there is fight all the time around you. Because you are repeating the things you are asked never to do in a system. How do you get honor that you are craving for at the same time when your mind is uselessly used? You can only get it when you use your mind effectively. Your growth is not in the devil's hands or in God's hands. It's how you think. Change your thought pattern and you will grow. Look at me, all of you. The devil will not use an enemy against you. He will use your mind against you. What you keep thinking about is what will happen to you. You keep saying, I'm sick, I'm sick. The day sickness will come, you will beg for help. You keep saying that people are your enemies. He will bring just one enemy. The one that will make you, you can't, you can't sleep in your house. You will be sleeping with, and your two eyes open. Because you are always seeing the devil coming. Every time it's Satan, it's Satan. So your mind is occupied with evil. And one day he brings just one to you. That will drive you out of your house. Drive you out of your office. And you will regret ever allowing the devil to get into, into your space. You must be careful. The Bible says, guide your mind with all diligence. Because out of it are the issues of life. Look at me. I went to do a total check of, on, on, on my entire flesh. Sir. When they did sit down, when they did everything. I heard the board doctor, the gynecologist and the doctor say, I, I am okay. I heard them. They didn't know I heard them. They now started developing ideas into me. They and there. Because of the kind of people I came with to the hospital. So they know that I have money. Even the gynecologist asked me, that crowd, you came with them? I said, yes. So they went and said, the guy has money. Are you following me? They started describing, describing. So I, I was looking at two of them. I said, excuse me, I, I'm not sick. I just want to identify my state of health. My legs are swollen. There's a reason for it. And I, know the, I know the reason for, for why it's swollen. They check my kidney like a baby. Lungs like a baby. Everything like a baby. The only situation that they said I had, I needed to rest. And they needed to give me one idea that I should buy. So I will remain in fear, which I was refusing from the onset. They told me when I was coming here that I would die here. A lady came to my office in DLA, came and told me clearly, I was in a dream and they carried your corpse to church. Life. I said, Yo, madam, you saw my twin brother. For me, I can't die here. I lie. She brought, and it came from two persons. 
The next person said, I'm going to have a child. Now, look at me. These dreams were coming in sections. One person came and told me, you, you had a, a second male child. Then my wife was not pregnant. Then if I hear pregnancy, I will rebuke it. When that dream came, and the person answered, but when the child was born, you died. Life, oh, when we are coming here. Then the attack came because of this land. Uh, I knew the devil knew that my destiny is here. So he's doing everything to drive me from here. I say, I lie. I no agree. It's better I die in my Godland than die outside my Godland. So not too long after three months, my, my wife got pregnant. Every normal man should be scared now. I did not. On the day of the child's delivery, I took my wife to the hospital myself and I stood there for the child to be born. The boy is how many years old now? Eight years old. All the devil was doing was to walk on my mind. So I will not get to this place. I did not allow the devil to settle me in a place. The next one, relate with God as your father. If you want sudden change in life, relate with God as your father. Not as a teacher. Please relate with God as your father. If you want to see changes in your life, Relate with God as your father. John 6, 11, John 11, 41, John 17, 1. Relate with God as your father. So you will see changes in your life. Don't come to God and say, Father, I command you now. He's not your mate. Don't command God. Relate with God as a sweet parent. Come to look at that Jesus is a model that we should learn from. Father, I thank you. Always come to God in thanksgiving. Always come to God grateful for the things he has done in the past. Don't come to God. Come to God and see you're reporting to God. Come. Stand there. You see, God, let me tell you. I have been praying. Look at me now. See, I've been praying. You're not answering. Don't, don't annoy me. You're, you're talking to God, though. God, though. God. G-O-D. God. God. I've been praying. God, it's as if you, you're, you're no more existing. Don't let me vex you. I will stop church and follow Satan. Who will go lose? Is it God? Follow Satan now. Go and follow him. And see how far you go. You are talking to your father, arrogantly. Relate with God as a father. Look at John chapter 6. See that son. He said, Father, I do what? Father, I do what? Look at John 11 41. He said, Father, I do what? Thank you. Jesus walked with God with a sense of gratitude at all times. He had nothing to regret about. He never came to God complaining about something. He was always telling, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Learn how to come to your father. Sometimes just lie down in the church and say nothing to him. You are worshiping God, you are saying, you are looking up and you are frowning. So you should do what now? They are dancing, you are not dancing. They are praying, you are not praying. What's the problem? Come to God as a father. Amen. 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 Anytime you come to God, what do you do? Father, I have no regrets. You have been faithful to me. Somebody is praying to be like you. He's just praying to be like you. And you are, and you are complaining. Examine yourself. Take time and examine your life. Luke 15, 17, 1 Corinthians 9, 27. Examine your life. Am I living the right life? Look at that. When he came to himself, he said, Am I living a life that will give me a testimony? You can't be keeping girlfriends and boyfriends and lying and living all kind of life and be expecting a miracle. And living any how you like examine yourself am i living the life that will bring testimonies to my life 
cheating people, offending people all, all everywhere. Am I living the right life? That if God wants to bless me now, he will bless me. That if God chooses to bless you now, he will bless you. No matter who is against you. Because he has checked through your life. You are a faithful servant. Examine yourself. First Corinthians 9 27. I'm not saying somebody talked against you. Leave all those ones. That's the one you talk about more. Someone spoke against your life. Sit down and examine your actions yourself. Am I living the right life that will give me a miracle? I do that a lot. I examine myself a lot of times. Sometimes I criticize myself more than people do. I examine myself. I don't need you to talk against me if I know that I'm wrong. I know when I'm wrong. And I will correct myself immediately. I don't need you to come and tell me I'm wrong. Because you are the best teacher of your life. Examine yourself. You want to see a testimony? Examine yourself. Check if you talk too much. If you hate too much. If you're playing with church. Examine yourself. Then suddenly, the miracles required will come. Amen? Will you put a new wine in an old bottle? No. You must put a new wine in a new bottle. You want to see changes in your life? Examine yourself. Examine yourself. Don't put people as a barrier. Check your life. Am I righteous enough to be blessed? Am I godly enough to have a testimony? If God alleviates me now, can I be the bride of God in the church? Examine yourself. These are the criteria that will bring your sudden testimony in life. Thank you for watching. We hope you have been blessed by this message. True God's servant, Dr. Maxwell Golden Abe. Heaven's arms are open wide to welcome you, no matter how far you have gone from him. If you want to accept Jesus into your life, kindly say this prayer. Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me and I repent of every one of my sins. Please forgive me. Come into my life even as I confess you as my Lord and personal Savior. I declare that I am born again and I receive grace to live for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Honeyward International Railroad City is located along Asaba Ibozo Expressway, opposite Step Down Transformer, Asaba Delta State, Nigeria. You can follow us in all our social media platforms Facebook at HanoWI, Facebook at Dr. Maxwell Golden Abe, Instagram at HanoWI, Instagram at Dr. Maxwell Golden Abe. YouTube at Hano TV. Please do well to share your testimony at HanoWorld at gmail.com or call 081-3655-7322 or call 081 7